Today I wanted to talk about the white sturgeon. The two remaining ones have been doing seemingly well. You may remember that we lost the third one to a wasting disease, which is probably a consequence of not being able to transfer to new feeds in time. These guys are kind of thin, I would say, even though they added maybe another inch since we put them here. They give them something to eat. I give them small pellets three, three times a day. That's the one eye that we call Bob for Bobber. Uh, the water has been cooling lately and rather suddenly, right after Hurricane Milton. In um, mid-October. The weather really turned. It's unusual for this year. So the water cooled pretty quickly for about 83, 82 to 84 to the current 78 to 80, which is much, much better for the sturgeon. You see, they're, they're, they're sucking in a lot of pellets and spitting, spitting out a lot of pellets. So, okay, he was just spitting out. It takes them a long time to to satiate themselves. The barber is one-eyed, if you remember. So they survived the summer, their first real summer, their first real test, Florida summer. The last summer they were, if you remember, I couldn't, they failed to quickly or reasonably convert to the warm water. They looked like they were dying. So I pretty much kept them in a tub oval tub on a chiller at 65 degrees and slowly slowly brought the water from 65 Fahrenheit to about 80 82 Fahrenheit over six months so this summer was the real the first real test and that's when we lost one as you know but at least these two seem to be doing okay even though they're a little thin, I would say, but maybe that's their constitution, their build. They don't look too bad. Again, you can see they have great appetite. They're sucking those pellets with much gusto. But they probably spit out 50% or most of what they suck in and retain enough to continue living and grow growing slightly. Their slow growth, I've, I've been attributing to the high temperature, they're probably not very comfortable. So I'm looking forward to this uh, cooler period of uh, November through April, when they will have their chance to hopefully have a growth spurt. It also took them a long time to get uh, used to the rectangular tank after the oval tub. So I've been swimming erratically, poking the head out of water, behaving awkwardly in the corners. I would say for at least a couple of months, if not longer, maybe three or four months. 
until they accepted the rectangular tank and come down. And now they're behaving more or less naturally, I would say. These are cold water fish, rather cold, cold, cool water fish, I should say. One of their native habitats, as Gil tells us, is the San Francisco Bay, which never gets above 65 Fahrenheit. So this summer, having been at 82 to 84 Fahrenheit, which is like 20 Fahrenheit higher, it was quite a test of of what they can, of what they, of the conditions and or the temperature at which they could survive. The water turnover is very very strong, about 12 times an hour. So it's very highly oxygenated water, it's coming in highly oxygenated and the flow is pretty strong as you can see. This is a 240 gallon tank which is only filled to about 200 gallons and the flow is 2500 gallons an hour. So it's about 12 to 13 turnovers an hour. See, he keeps sucking them in and some of them spitting out. I notice they like them softer, smaller and softer, which is strange because they have a very large mouth and uh, telescopic mouth. And they are large fish, so uh, have, they should have a pretty decent size throat too, so I don't know why they want the pellets to be small and soft. But that's how they like them. Their tank mates are doing well, the um, high fin Chinese banded a uh, banded loach or shark has been enjoying the three daily feedings also because their biology is similar, feeding little but feeding taking smaller amounts of feed but more times a day, more frequently. So it, it benefited from that. It grew quite a bit, I would say. Probably added a couple of inches or more this summer. Mr. Black has been chilling in his cave. Mr. Knife is up there. There's only two yields remaining in this tank. The other two are in the, in the different tank. Female and a male. The lone Tiggy is doing well in the corner. The Proculotus is going to burst. It ate so much. And the two Atlantic tarpon have grown tremendously. They also love to eat. They have grown a lot, both girth-wise and, and length-wise. So this tank has been more or less good. Uh, it's been good for everybody, except for the yield on yield, yield on yield aggression. And Mr. Black is probably sometimes giving hard times to to the tank mates. I'm sure those rips in the you see the two rib, uh, both tails are slightly ripped. It, I'm guessing it's Mr. Black. I'm pretty sure it's Mr. Black. When when the sturgeon starts to get awkward, awkwardly, and sometimes maybe may even try to go into into Mr. Black's cave, he does not let anybody do that. So he would attack immediately. But this this is an accident. The, the sturgeons just little rigid and it's hard for them if they decide to turn right here between the center block and the wall they may not be able to turn and then they force force themselves into the cave into the opening of the center block and if mr black is there he, he will not take kindly to that but he does it to anybody anyhow these ribs have been there for a while and uh, sometimes they almost disappear sometimes they're a little a little more visible but for now it's been tolerable so I'm leaving things as, as is, status quo.
Yeah, such is our update on the white sturgeon surviving their first summer in Florida.